States, but joining us now on our set here at Miami-Dade College is Susan Herman, whose day job is president of the ACLU, but she's also the author of this book, Taking Liberties. Susan Herman, where do we stand when it comes to the Patriot Act today? What's the status of it? Well, the status of the Patriot Act here is something I think a lot of people don't understand because when it was enacted five weeks after 9-11 in October of 2001, Congress hadn't had any hearings. They didn't really yet know, you know what was going wrong, but they had ideas about what tools to give the government to try to prevent terrorism. So the Patriot Act ever since 2001 has been effective and has given the government all these dragnet tools to do surveillance and all kinds of other things. But I found that when George W. Bush left the White House, people somehow assumed that the Patriot Act had gone away. So you know, people were telling me, well, you know, what does the ACLU have to do now? You know, couldn't you just go out of business and you know, maybe put a big sign on the door saying, mission accomplished? But you know, it wasn't the case, so the Patriot Act is very much with us. And with current events, I actually, one thing I hope we can talk about is that I think there may actually be some prospects for change. What, where? Okay, well, one thing that happened, I started writing this book in the middle of Barack Obama's first term. And uh, at that time, you know, people didn't understand that Obama had really continued all of President Bush's policies, all the surveillance policies and everything we were doing domestically. And so, you know, uh, Linda Greenhouse referred to my book as a wake-up call. But, you know, people kind of didn't wake up that much, and people were not really looking to re-examine the decisions that had been made in the fall of 2001 about what our anti-terrorism strategies should be. So um, what I would say is that there was a kind of a snooze alarm, and then the real wake-up call came with Edward Snowden. And when he started releasing documents about what actually is going on behind the curtains and what kind of surveillance there is, I think people did start to pay more attention, I think for good reasons. And so what I'll tell you is I think that it matters more than ever that people be aware of what's going on and in touch of what's happening politically, because there is pending in Congress right now a bill that's called the USA Freedom Act. And I wonder uh, how, um, how many of your viewers would know that the USA Patriot Act was an acronym? Would people know this? Okay. Go ahead. USA Patriot, if you visualize the letters, actually stands for the actual name of the bill, which is Uniting and Strengthening America by Providing Appropriate Tools Required to Intercept and Obstruct Terrorism. That's the name of the act. But somebody stayed up very late at night thinking of that. So the USA Freedom Act, also all capital letters, is you know, something of a poke at the, at the, the swagger of that title. It's called Uniting and Strengthening America by you know, having freedom from electronic eavesdropping, data collection, and online monitoring. Okay, and this is something that now is pending in Congress. It now has over 100 sponsors in the House, and I don't remember what the number is in the Senate. But it's the first time that Congress has really been looking seriously at the idea of rolling back some of the Patriot Act surveillance provisions. Susan Herman, does the ACLU support the U.S. Freedom Act, the USA Freedom Act? Right, we do support the USA Freedom Act. I think one thing that it does is um, it, it addresses one of the chief things that we've learned from the Edward Snowden documents is that the government is doing bulk collection about information about the telephone calls of every American. The, um, who we call, you know, what numbers we call, what numbers we get calls from, the duration of our calls, you know, how often we call, what time of day it is. And so this is just on all Americans. They're collecting all of this information. And to me, the problem here is that what we're doing, I mean, I think a lot of people assume that we need to give up our liberties in order to be safe, but I think there are a lot more costs here and a lot fewer benefits than people really realize. One of the costs of all this bulk collection I think is that this is exactly the kind of you know, massive surveillance that the people who wrote our Constitution, and particularly the Fourth Amendment, were trying to prevent. So the Fourth Amendment is the part of the Bill of Rights that protects us against unreasonable searches and seizures. It says we should be secure in our persons, houses, papers, and effects. And the reason that our you know, founding fathers wrote this into the Bill of Rights was that they didn't like the idea that the king's agents might be able to come and search what they were doing and look in their homes to see if they had seditious literature or you know, goods on which they hadn't paid the customs. So their concept was that there's a very important value that the individual should have privacy and that the government not just be able to find out everything that you're doing, even though, as you know, I think they knew at the time, the risk was that maybe somebody was committing crime in a, a crime in a home and maybe the government wouldn't be able to find out about it because they weren't allowed to just walk into the home at will. They had to go through a court, they had to go through a process. 
And to me, what the Patriot Act has enabled with all these dragnets is it's the kind of general search that led to the American Revolution. So you know, that's one reason why the ACLU is supporting having some limit on the government's just surveillance dragnets to just spy on everybody, even if there's no reason to suspect that, anyone's, that the person's done anything wrong. What's the status of the FISA court? Is it still active? The FISA court is, is very active, right. So that's one of the things that uh, happened. The, um, in the fall of 2001, what the Congress did in order to allow the government more surveillance powers was they built on a couple of areas where there wasn't that much Fourth Amendment protection. So the FISA court, the Foreign Intelligence Surveillance Court, had been established as part of a compromise in the late 70s when people were very upset about Richard Nixon spying on his political enemies. So there was the, the church committee, Frank Church ran this important committee where they did a complete exploration of the American history and the intelligence area. And what they decided was that it was not permissible for the government to spy on Americans without going through the court, without you know, being more careful, but that it was all right to spy on the Soviet embassy to see you know, what they were up to because it was the Cold War. So the idea was that you know, Americans get constitutional protections, foreigners don't. The 2001 legislation and some legislation we've had since then basically says that even though if the government is targeting somebody who's a foreigner, you know, who's not covered, and if that's one end of a conversation, they can pick up whatever the Americans are saying at the other end. So one thing that the FISA court has authorized is that in addition to what's been called the metadata, just the telephone numbers that you call and from which you get calls, and you know, not the contents, the government can also pick up the contents of Americans' emails, telephone calls, Skypes, texts, whatever, within the Foreign Intelligence Surveillance Act, as long as there's a foreigner someplace. So that was another of the revelations of, of the Snowden documents. So you know, the FISA court has a lot more to do with Americans than, than you might think. Since 2001, <clears throat> has the Patriot Act, the FISA surveillance, been increased or decreased in, it, in its yeah, power? It's a great question. I think it's actually been increased. When President Obama was a candidate, when he was running for office, he said, you know, no more national security letters that spy on Americans. But now that he's president, I think he sees his powers and, you know, differently. And, you know, he feels that he can be trusted with all these dragnet powers. And so it sounds as if, you know, what the FISA court has allowed actually is an expansion. And that, you know, there's more and more material just being collected in bulk. And that what's being collected uh, under the Foreign Intelligence Surveillance Act, even though it's on Americans, has also increased. Uh, I think there's a possibility for another increase. For a while, until 2011, the government was also collecting uh, email addresses, internet addresses that we visit. The FISA court had also authorized that. And the government actually stopped collecting all that information in 2011. But they could do it again because they're authorized to do that. So this tremendously broad powers. And we're talking with Susan Herman. This is her book, Taking Liberties, The War on Terror, and the Erosion of American Democracy. 202 is the area code, 585-3890. For those of East and Central time zones, 585-3891. If you live in the mountain, Pacific, and or further West time zones, go ahead and dial in if you'd like to have a discussion about what we're talking about here, about freedoms and surveillance, et cetera, et cetera. Um, Susan Herman also serves as president of the American Civil Liberties Union. She's a professor of law at Brooklyn Law School as well. <clears throat> Edward Snowden, in that parlor game, hero or goat? <laughs> well, you know, my usual response, Peter, when people want to talk about Edward Snowden is my first response is to say, instead of talking about the messenger, can we talk about the problem he's been exposing? And I think Edward Snowden has actually done us a great favor because he said the reason that he wanted to start releasing some of these documents is so that the American people could actually make the decision about whether they think we've gone too far and whether they think there are now too many costs. And I think that is, in fact, a discussion that we're not now having. So I think, you know, I think his strategy worked. The American people are being informed. Because one of the things that we learned, it's not even just that the government was spying in ways that I was already describing in my book, but that we had in the FISA court, we had secret law. There was law that the court was making that the American people couldn't even find out what the law was. And to me, that just, it, it really went too far. Is there anything in the Patriot Act that you agree with? <laughs> well, you know, there was a lot in the Patriot Act. It's actually a collection of amendments to you know, hundreds of previous laws. And one of my favorite